call this meeting to order. Thank you for attending. Um, the, our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance and saluting the flag. So please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. The, um, the mayor called me on the way to the meeting. He wanted me to start. There was a report of um, a child hit uh, by a car and, and, and a bicycle involved, so he doesn't know exactly the details, so he's probably going to be coming shortly, um, and if it's more involved, uh, he won't be coming. So I'm going to start the meeting on his behalf. Uh, the first item is the hearing of visitors. I do not believe anyone has signed up for the hearing of visitors, um, so we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the bundling of routine business of the school committee. And if there's any item that a school committee member would like to individually address, this is the opportunity for that member to request a particular item be set aside for further consideration. Uh, members, is there anything that you would like to remove to discuss on an individual basis? Okay, seeing none, can someone please make a motion to accept the consent agenda? And someone needs to second it? Second. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Uh, the superintendent is at a conference, so we are joined this evening by Deputy Superintendent Michael Thomas. Mr. Thomas, why don't you take over now for a report of Superintendent of Schools. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. Uh, first, I want to start, as we always do, um, with an update on the charter school. Um, at this time, we have 234 Brockton Public School um, that were Brockton Public School students and Brockton residents um, that are attending the charter school, and those numbers are as of today. Um, that's the only update that I have for you uh, concerning the charter school. Um, does anyone have any questions or would like to say anything on that topic? Mr. Diagostino. Is that their October 1 number that was reported as well? or um, That I'll have to get for you. Okay. Um, that, um, I don't know if that was their October 1st number. That's of, as of today, but um, I can get you that number. Okay, thank you. I'll have that in the Friday packet. Perfect. Mr. Sullivan. Just one question, Mike. On the two, was it 234? Or 222? 234. 234. Are those children come out of the Brockton Public Schools? Yes. Are they already, or they already are coming out of the those, Brockton? Those were students of the Brockton Public Schools. Um, uh, they're saying their enrollment is at, um, at the full 300. Um, so, but out of the 300, 234 of those students were from the Brockton Public Schools. Some, some of those other kids could be Brockton residents that did not attend Brockton Public Schools. Um, it also could be, obviously, students from Randolph and Taunton. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Would you have a count of, like, the Trinity kids or? Uh, no. No, that no. wouldn't show on it. Any that. Brockton residents that attended private schools or um, other charter schools, um, they would not be part of okay. this 234 number. Even if they're Brockton residents, yeah, they wouldn't have been enrolled in us. This is just the 234 uh, actual uh, records that were released from uh, that were students with us last year. Uh, or this year, and um, we release those records to the charter school. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Okay, Mr. Thomas, why don't we move on to item two under report of superintendent. I wanted to give you an update on the accelerated repair program from the, um, that we entered into <coughs> last year with the MSBA. Um, as you, um, the, we did three roof projects, um, the Brookfield, the Ashfield, both of those roofs are about 95% complete. Uh, there is some finish work and punch list items that are being completed now. 
Um, the Gilmore School is about 80% um, finished. Also some punch list items that have to be complete. Um, the windows at the Barrett Russell are 100% complete. And the, the boilers at the Ashfield and at the Gilmore are also 100% complete. Um, there is items that are up in the air called change orders from reliable roofing. Um, change orders are when they start a construction project um, and some things come up that the contractor feels that goes above and beyond their contract. They have to submit a change order to the architect in the OPM. Uh, as you know, the architect and the OPM were assigned to us by the MSBA. Um, there is a dispute between the roofing company, Reliable Roofing, and Ty and Bond, the architects, and the OPM uh, ACG. So uh, that is being settled now through um, the attorneys talking about um, how to settle these change orders. The change orders uh, are high, about $3 million in change orders. <laughs> And that's on the that's for the Brookfield and the Ashfield roofs. Um, it, this has been ongoing, and um, Mr. Sullivan, feel free to jump in. As Mr. Sullivan is part of, of the Accelerated Repair Committee that we have, um, but the City Attorney um, Kate Federoff and Karen Fisher have done a great job handling this um, issue. Uh, they have called on the services of an outside attorney, um, Christopher Petrini, who's an expert in construction. Um, with contracts in construction law. So he is coming in to try to settle this dispute between um, the tie-in bond and the reliable roofing with the, um, where it pertains to these change orders. So um, we're probably a long way away from where it's finally settled because basically the architect have to, has to sign off on any work that's done. Uh, and before the committee can actually vote on it to approve paying the bills. If the architect does not sign off on the work and the architect has not signed off on these change orders, the MSBA does not reimburse the city the 80% that we get back. So that's where we stand. So um, this could be a long process. The attorneys are going to try to figure it out before it goes actually into litigation. Uh, we're hoping that we can come to some resolution before it gets to litigation. So. Um, but as far as those roofs go, they are winter tight, air tight, water tight. Um, and again, the um, Gilmore is about 80% done. The Ashfield and the Brookfield, they're about 95% done. There's some edge metal work that needs to be completed at the Ashfield and the Brookfield. And there's a couple of those. They're the large windows that you see in the gyms. Um, they're, they're called cow wall windows. Um, those are being installed now. Um, they're, they're in the large gym at the Brookfield and also the small gym, and they were just in the large gym at the Ashfield. So those are being completed now. Uh, but the, the roofs are watertight. So that, that's going through the process. I just wanted to give you an update on that. And Mr. Sullivan, feel free to, to jump in. If I could, I'd just like to add that uh, there's been about five or six meetings with this committee. It used to be the Green Roof Committee. Now it's Accelerated Roof. And we had worked with this reliable roofing before, and they were fabulous. If you remember about three years ago, yes. the East Junior High, there was a deadline that had to be done. And it had to be done on school vacation, if I remember right. And they put about 50 guys up there and finished the job in one weekend. It was unbelievable. This year, something's going on. Something's happened. And just so everybody knows, the committee has voted to pay everything up to date. All the money that's owed to these people have been paid. And they assured us that each school that's having a new roof put on would not lose any classroom time, that the work will be done. And I'm guessing now it's just up to the lawyers for who's, who pays who and what has to be paid. And this committee, 80% of it is going to be paid by the state. The other 20% is the city of Brockton. Correct. And everything is on hold right now until this lawsuit gets settled. And it's been interesting. Thank you.
Thank you. Could you clarify whether we've paid for anything that is under dispute right now? No, we have not. Nothing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and the process is the uh, anytime they submit a bill or a change order, it has to go through the architect. The architect is the uh, authority on signing off on any work. So um, they have to sign off on the work. The, the bills actually go to the architect first. Then the architect vets the bills, make sure that the work is complete, uh, make sure it's done right, and then they forward the bills to ALDO in the Accelerated Repair Committee to be paid. And then we schedule a meeting of the committee. We go through, the architect is in all those meetings, and he goes through each bill, explains what it's for, and then he says this is approved to be paid by me, the architect, and then the committee votes on those. And again, the only way the MSBA will reimburse you the 80% if their architect signs off on it. Has this cost us anything more than we projected at this point? No. Okay. Oh, it, so far, we are under budget. Um, again, the attorney fees will, will cost a little bit of money um, if it goes long into the uh, process, but we are still under budget. Thank you. And the attorneys know that, that no matter what they come up with a settlement, it has to be within um, the city's budget. Otherwise, it, it would have to go back to the city council. As you know, um, the 20% has to be bonded by the city council uh, way back before the project even started. Uh, we cannot go over that budgeted amount uh, without going back to the city council for approval. Uh, we're not even close to that because we are under budget. And um, I don't want to talk too much about this if it gets into litigation, but um, we're pretty confident that the architect and the OPM, um, who are strong at what they do, have um, documented everything, have followed the procedures um, into the letter of the contract in the, in the specifications laid out in the contract for this work. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this at this point, because I know who knows if this is going to end up in litigation or not at this point. But do we know, or can you tell me why the architect isn't willing to sign off? What is it that is preventing him from doing that? Okay. I, I think that's a matter for, litig that's a litigation matter, a factual a claim that we probably have. So I'm just advising you that I don't think that's something that we should be discussing here because it's a potential claim. Okay. But I could um, get the information out to you when our next meeting is for accelerated repair. Um, those are public meetings that are posted. Um, and I will get that in your packet the next time we schedule a meeting so you can obviously feel free to attend. Uh, the architect would be there as well. Um, and these kind of things are discussed in those meetings. Okay. I was just curious. Yep. No, I, I understand. No problem. But I, I'll get that invitation out to um, the notice of when the next meeting is so you have the option to come and um, you can meet the architect and you're welcome to ask them any questions. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Mr. Thomas, before we move on, I was remiss in not introducing our student representative. How are you? Uh, this is Samtu Anubogu? Samtu Anubog. Okay, good evening and welcome aboard. You were here at the last meeting and did a fine job. Um, at this point, what we'd like to do is have a report from the high school and um, our student representative did a fine job last meeting. I turn the floor over to you. How are you tonight? Great. What is there going on that the public would be interested in knowing about? Um, well, first, I would like to say that generally, things are going well at Brockton High. Uh, the atmosphere is calm and productive, as it should be. Uh, many clubs and after-school programs have started. Um, the freshman pact specifically started yesterday. As part of the larger freshman mentors program, the pact offers peer mentoring and academic assistant, assistance after school Monday through Thursday bearing faculty meetings. Uh, the PSATs will be taken tomorrow, Wednesday the 19th, by juniors and some sophomores. 
Parent-teacher conferences are this Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m. This is an opportunity for parents and teachers to discuss student progress. The freshman mentors will be there to guide parents and provide information and academic resources. Halloween hallway is on the 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the red building. Halloween hallway is a fun and safe alternative to door-to-door -to -door trick or treating recommended for children 10 and under. All fall sports, soccer, field hockey, girls volleyball and cross country continue and there will be a home football game this Friday, the 21st, against New Bedford High School. The halftime show will be performing. And lastly, Friday is Spirit Day. We ask all students and faculty to wear their red and black to represent school pride. That is all. So can you tell us a little bit about the atmosphere at Brockton High? You mentioned that things were um, on track. What, um, tell me your thoughts. My, my what? Your thoughts. My thoughts? Because we um, care about what you think. <laughs> um, I would say that, I would say that the atmosphere in the day, in the weeks following the incident, like the incidents um, with the fights and such, cement the fact that those incidents were very isolated and were not, um, were not par for the course for Brockton High um, because since those, since those incidents, everything has been very normal and productive and safe. Everything has been good. Well, that's good to hear. Very good to hear. All right, well, that was a great report. We appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you um, at the next school committee meeting. Okay. Uh, could I jump in and say something about the PSATs? Absolutely. I, I just want to thank um, the school committee. Uh, over the years, this has been something uh, that you have funded. Uh, it was funded recently by um, Brockton High School um, out of their BEF account, where all junior, all juniors take the PSATs. Um, students are left not on their own to take it. On a Saturday, this is actually something that was set up um, probably about 10 years ago by the BHS administration and department heads. Um, this is a real benefit to Brockton public school students. Um, they get to take the PSATs free of charge during the school day. Um, I believe this is now a line item that you fund every year, um, and I don't want to uh, downplay the importance of what this does for kids. Um, in their efforts to, um, to get them into college. So it's something that this committee should be commended for. Uh, it's something that Brockton High should be commended for. Um, the administration and the staff, um, just to show the importance of preparing kids um, to go to college. So it's, it's something that's a great thing that we do. Wonderful. Um, I was just checking my phone, and unfortunately, um, the mayor won't be attending. Um, my, my feeling is that um, this, there's an unfortunate accident and he, his uh, attendance is required at the scene. So, um, so I'll be continuing the meeting and the mayor, like I said, would have been here but for um, an accident involving a child and that's obviously a priority for the mayor. Um, so we will move on, Mr. Thomas, correct? Yes. Let's talk about so middle school sports update. Yep. We'll bring up uh, Dr. Murray. Our executive director of middle schools, the middle schools, and also of the principal of West. Thank you. No, not yet. I'll try to find. I have to try to get a hand to have the school. How's everything? Excellent, excellent. You're going to talk about a topic that we all. Um, well, I actually have two topics. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, whichever to topic position. you would like topic to. Topic two, you're going to have to wait. Oh, all right. You can stay up there, but you'll have to wait. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you. So you can have to wait till you called on. So oh, middle right. school sports update. Well, we started our uh, sports program, our hybrid program, on Monday. Uh, kind of a, a quick startup uh, with the cooperation of the BEA and the building principals and coaches from last year and coaches from this year. We were able to 
engage all of our students uh, in both boys and girls soccer and in cross country. Uh, it's a, a program that's really designed to get as many students engaged in after school activities for an hour and a half, four days a week for five weeks. And then uh, we have sites as yet to be determined, but the sixth week will be a couple of days of kind of a round robin knockout type tournament involving students who would <clears throat> demonstrated sportsmanship, athletic ability, uh, the kind of students that we all know and love here in Brockton will be asked to come and participate in, a, in an all-star sense for a couple of days at the high school or one of the middle schools. So uh, I know from my own personal experience, the last two days we've had almost 100 students outside. Uh, some of them went and did the cross country for 45 minutes and then decided to play soccer as well. So I know my colleagues are reporting a, uh, a large turnout, a lot of interest. Of course, the weather's been beautiful. But um, I think the idea of not having tryouts but exposing everybody to this has been a real positive and uh, certainly seen a lot of students involved the last two days. with us um, to get this program um, developed and completed so we could get it off the ground for this fall. So I want to thank uh, all those who were involved and also for the committee for, um, for putting the, the right. funds back in so we could, we could get this going. So the season's about six weeks. We've also got a winter season that will consist of boys and girls basketball with the same format and uh, also volleyball. And then in the spring, we have the two traditional sports, baseball and softball. Our hope is that maybe we can add some other things that are, are perhaps less traditional, but um, s sports that students who aren't quite as athletic might, might find just as enjoyable. A kickball, flag football for boys and girls, uh, wiffle ball, those types of things. Again, the idea of getting as many students as we can outside for an hour and a half, uh, four days a week. The other uh, side benefit, if you will, of this is that we already, you've already funded an intramurals program. We've continued that. And by having this activity in the evenings, we're able to expand our offerings in the mornings for our students. So we can have students come in early, they can get some exercise in, and then go to breakfast and start their day with their, their minds at ease and their stomachs full. And um, it is a very productive, very positive way to start the day. So it's, it's had that added benefit of allowing us to schedule more mornings for students. We have a lot of students to get dropped off early anyway, so it's a way to get them active and, you know, get them thinking. Mr. Gordon, how many schools are having activities online? Uh, I can't <clears throat> honestly answer that. I know that the Compass Middle Schools, North, East, South, and West, do stuff in the mornings. Uh, some of the schedules are a little different in, in the three other buildings, so I'm quite sure that four are doing it. Uh, how, how uh, the other three have determined it was kind of a last minute thing last week. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get that information. I'll make sure that Mr. Thomas gets it yeah. to everybody. And I know that Brockton High started um, a morning intramural program. Yep. And I think they've had almost 200 kids every day take right. part in, in that. And also um, Chartwells was kind enough to, to do the bag uh, breakfast uh, and, and give that out over in the gym as well. So students that are um, interested in doing, um, getting some exercise in the morning, instead of entering, entering through their calves, are able to go and enter through the gym. Uh, there's a scholarship um, kiosk o over there where they can check in for their attendance, uh, and also they can have uh, breakfast and they can participate. I think they've had about 200, Bob, is that correct? So that's, that's actually in, helped, and also helped spread the, ki the, the kids out before school starts, so it's, it's worked very well. So that is part of the intramurals program. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, as you know, Mr. Thomas, students who start the day exercising tend to perform better exactly. uh, academically. So um, if we could get that going in more schools, that'd be awesome. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case simply because of the, the time in the day. Right. But I, I can't say exactly how that's being handled. We all have a varying degrees of that breakfast program now in the buildings. Um, so it's just a, it dovetails nicely to what we're trying to do. Get them going, get them thinking, get their blood flowing. Mr. Corbin, what is your area of expertise? <laughs> I don't have one. Mm. <laughs> now, physical education uh, is, uh, 
my so this is right up your area. wheelhouse. <laughs> it this was. One, yeah. Mr. Thomas and I have talked about that very uh, subject a few times. Great. Well, it's good to have an expert uh, on staff, as we say. Um, I think he knows more than I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Miss 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 Sullivan, how are you? How you doing? Hi. Hi. Um, you were saying that the fall schedule was six weeks. Correct. Right. Is that the winter and spring one too? Yes. Okay. So there'll, so there'll be a little bit of a, um, you know, a time in between, uh, but basically it's about one week less than what we would have typically run with okay. um, our old program, where we had reduced the game schedule a little bit, uh, and with the holidays, in November, being such, it really is. It'll pick right up. So, okay. Uh, the winter season will be stretched out a little bit. Obviously, volleyball is something that takes place in a gymnasium, as does basketball. So that, that season will probably be kind of at the end of the basketball season, which has always been the case anyway. So, And hopefully we can have you know 75 or 100 kids playing volleyball. So it would be great. Yeah. So is the... Um so you said it was soccer and cross country. Is it all co-ed? No, uh, no. Well, cross country is co-ed, always has been, uh, but the girls and boys are playing separately soccer. Okay. Uh, basically, in the past, they would divide the field up anyway. Uh, fortunately, we've got more students playing, so using cones and playing small-sided games, and it's, again, it's just a way to get them, we're trying to make sure that we don't have a lot of kids standing around right. and that they're all being active and, uh, I think uh, the, the coaches will start to, you know, point out things as we go, but the emphasis really is on movement and activity in the, in the sports themselves. Great. And just one more question. Um, so it's all AM in the AM at all the schools? No, no. The, no. the uh, intramurals or the hybrid sports, I should say, is all in the afternoon for an hour and a half, four days a week. Okay. Uh, our intramurals programs, at least, as I said, the, the four schools that I'm positive about, we, we always had a couple of days in the morning and a couple of days in the afternoon. And now with this other program, we're able to do four mornings a week and then the four afternoons as well. So okay. it's just, a, I think it's just a really fantastic way for the, the students to start the day and to end the day. So it's, Thank work, you. it's working out. Great, thank you. Ms. Plant. Do you have more students that want to enroll than you have um, room for, or do you have space? Well, r right now, currently, because we're outside, we have space. And okay. The cross country, they go off and run. But um, in the winter time, we may be uh, vexed with a situation where if we have 100 uh, boys and 60 girls and want to play basketball, we may have to divide the days up a little bit. But once again, the emphasis is in playing the games, uh, you know, uh, sportsmanship, teamwork. So instead of trying to set up schedules where we have a practice for about 12 students to use the whole gym, we'll use the gym, go half court, play, uh, you know, five, uh, five point knockout so that it'll be fast paced. Uh, the, ideally, the schools will create, the kids will create their own teams and, you know, we'll kind of keep track. And it's, so it's competitive, but it's, um, again, the development of uh, some leadership skills and, and sportsmanship. But hopefully we run into that problem, to be honest with you. I'd love to have to stagger the days. And again, with the uh, freeing up the time in the morning, you know, some of those groups of students in a perfect world will come and play in the mornings as teams. And so we, we like to kind of see this, this carry out, you know, okay. through the year. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Kim Gibson uh, from the BEA and the BEA members. Um, you, Mr. Murray, as well as Mr. Thomas and Nick Lee, and um, was Tom Kenny consulted on this as well? Yes. Um, anyone else? No, I think that's it. I, I, I'm sorry if I'm, miss, if I'm <laughs> missing someone. Missing somebody. Well, I mean, this was um, this was obviously an effort by everyone to. Um, try to make a bad situation with the budget work. And um, you know, this, this is the work of um, the commitment of resources that the school committee has to make um, in a tough budget, you know, what to spend resources on. And you know, the school committee felt that um, there would be a lot of children, a lot of students at the middle school level 
who would have idle time on their hands. And as we all know, um, at certain ages, idle time can breed mischief. And we um, you know, wanted to make sure that there were activities that um, the <coughs> students could be involved in that would be productive, uh, safe, and um, you know, basically keep them out of trouble. And also, as was pointed out on several occasions from Dr. Murray, um, it's also an incentive uh, that the staff, teachers can use um, to basically influence kids to perform and to um, conduct themselves in a certain way so that they can and be involved in these types of activities after school. So, you know, it, it provides um, um, an assistance on many fronts. And uh, again, it was a very tough decision because we, um, you know, had a tough budget. and. We certainly um, appreciate the cooperation of all those involved and certainly the uh, instructors who uh, helped make this work as well. Um, you know, because, you know, unfortunately, it was a reduction in funding. It was almost half. Um, it went from, I think, 178,000 down to 78? I think it was 168 68. to um, 78. Yeah, okay, I and mean, that's a big reduction, but um, it seems that this is a, um, a plan that uh, is not short on um, quality and is not short on things to do, um, but um, was a very uh, unique way of getting the most bang for the buck, and a lot of kids are involved in this, and um, you know, we thank all of those involved, so appreciate it. Okay, I think, uh, is that it for middle school sports? That's it for the report of the superintendent of schools. Okay, um, any unfinished business? No? Uh, all right, Mr. M uh, Dr. Mari is chomping at the bit for new business, apparently. Yes. Uh, Always chomping. <laughs> This is about the reschedule of the middle school uh, parent conferences. Okay, the floor is yours. Well, uh, it, it was uh, don't realized or dawned on us um, about a week ago that we have always clamored for conferences and uh, open houses and things of that nature to be on Thursday evenings. We just found that our attendance was better, a little more positive for our students and staff. We were very fortunate this year that the schedule worked out and um, our conferences were scheduled for Thursdays. Unfortunately, uh, an oversight, and uh, I'm embarrassed to admit one where my, both my father and my grandfather are veterans, uh, that we scheduled our conferences for Thursday evening on November 10th, which is the day before Veterans Day, which is, is a day off. Uh, the middle school conferences have changed the format over the last several years to an afternoon and an evening session. We have seen tremendous uh, increases in our parent participation uh, with regards to student conferences because we've been able to address folks that work during the day, uh, those that worked at night or had other obligations, other activities with their children. So my concern, which I brought to the superintendent, was that by having it be the day before a holiday, a long weekend, that our students would be dismissed at 11.30 and the attendance would be uh, woeful, uh, both in the afternoon and evening sessions because of the holiday. And uh, I, I really, with the trending that we've had the last couple of years, we've had you know close to 80% participation, which is really fantastic across the middle schools. Uh, I just felt it was something that I had to bring to her attention. And uh, we looked at the calendar trying to be as um, the least disruptive as possible. And we did have the prior Wednesday, the 9th I think it is, um, open. We didn't have any other events district wide. So uh, discussed this with uh, the deputy superintendent, uh, Liz Berry, uh, many of my colleagues. and. Uh, Consensus, so we'd ask the superintendent if there was any way we could change the calendar to that Wednesday, uh, <clears throat> realizing that it's, it's a month and there are going to be some issues with child care. And, and again, I apologize if it's approved in advance for that. But I just think the, it's important having the parents come in and discuss their students' progress with us. 
Uh, we've done such a good job the last few years in increasing that participation level and, and making the whole experience a little more meaningful. Um, I would hate to take a giant step backwards. And uh, again, this is an oversight. I take responsibility for this because I kind of approved the calendar, um, just not realizing that we would have Veterans Day on a Friday. So our request through the superintendent is that we move the conferences from Thursday the 10th to Wednesday the 9th. And uh, we've already discussed how we would reach out with the social media, with the website, uh, with both paper and phone contacts with all our parents. And uh, you know, we understand that there are still gonna be some people who you know, may have made some tentative plans. Uh, in all candor, I don't think they'd have to change those. Thursday would be a regular school day with dismissal at 2.35. And you know, if they had some other significant obligation, then obviously, like, like any holiday, there will be students that would be dismissed. So. so we're requesting that where you vote on the calendar and prove it, that you would approve this change and make sure that next year I do a much better job at analyzing the holiday schedule first. OK. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Ms. Plant. The parents, you said initially it was, um, you did half a day conferences. Well, yeah, initially when well. well, initially when I started teaching in middle school, we just did in the evening, and okay. it was usually from five to eight. And I can tell you that the participation was low. We used percentages, and we were lucky if we had maybe twenty percent participation. There was always a group of parents that came, but overall, we just didn't seem we weren't able to reach or provide convenient times. Uh, so now what happens is we're, the students leave at 11.30, and we start conferences at uh, 12.45, and we run till 2.30. Those are typically always full. And then in the afternoon, we get a, another you know, pretty good group of parents, usually till 7.15, 7.30 anyway. So it's just, I think, afforded people more of an opportunity you know, to adjust their schedule and, you know, we'll have a, a mom come in or, you know, a grandmom in the afternoon and then we'll have dad or an uncle come in in the evening. So we, we do it by appointment. Uh, there are about 10 minutes and, and we really are trying to be as inclusive as we can. So it, it has it's had a significant, our, our participation rate, I think last year was 84%. So it's, it's, it's a big number. And again, we'd like to try to keep that parent involvement at, at that level. Would you send home the paper? You said, so it's by appointment, so do you send home a paper? Right, what we do is a, um, about a week before the conferences, we send a slip home reminding parents about conferences, and then they can put in a time that is most convenient for them, and then the student will bring that slip back, and we actually have a schedule, so we, we try to be as accommodating as we can. Um, if it's an afternoon or an evening appointment, and um, typically, Again, uh, this is probably the fourth or fifth year we've done this, so folks are pretty much uh, comfortable with the process, and we really do have a pretty good uh, response rate for that. So. Due to the um, date change, would you consider sending out those papers maybe even earlier than well, usual? Well, I think what we would definitely do is a Connect Ed call. We'd probably send something home, you know, piece of paper and just advising people of the change. I think that's something that we would, we would be doing from now until the day of the conferences. Uh, again, I think um, it's, it would be a Wednesday, so it would probably go out the, the prior Monday, so they'd have about nine days. And basically, all that really is doing is um, kind of selecting a slot. We, we take parents uh, pretty much right up to the, the moment conferences are, if we have space. When we've actually, and we have in the past, in some cases run out of that, then we always set up conferences through our guidance office when it's convenient for the parents, you know, in the following days, so. And the new schedule date, that's a half a day as well? Well, that's what you're kind of voting on. It would end up moving the half day from the 9th, uh, excuse me, Thursday the 10th to Wednesday the 9th. Obviously, we'd have to communicate with Chartwells about the lunches. Um, for a student in terms of buses, of those types of things. So there's a lot of people that we would have to make aware of our desire to change. We talked about using social media. The website is another way to make sure that people are uh, informed. We would probably most of the schools will be having <coughs> PAC meetings prior to that. So that would be another vehicle that we would use. But um, I, I, we would obviously redouble our efforts in terms of communicating about um, the conferences, and it actually might increase the, uh, the turnout if we're as diligent as we're going to need to be if we make a change. Great. 
Thank you. Um, I was really happy to hear that they have the afternoon session now. Yeah. Because when my kids were in, it was only night, and I know they were struggling. Right. I didn't know they changed it to that. So yeah, I'm really happy to hear that it's open and more parents are. It, it's really um, impressive because there's a lot of folks who, between shifts or yep. childcare or whatever, can come in in the afternoon, or they're just more comfortable. Some folks don't like to go out in the evenings. Right. And. Uh, We've, we've seen uh, a significant numbers. Typically, our afternoon sessions are filled, and uh, it didn't have a negative impact in the evening. So there's still folks that have to get back from work, and uh, it's just increased the number of students that are represented and allowed for us to better communicate about what's going on in school. Sounds great to me. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? OK. so. Um, you're looking for a motion then uh, for approval of the request of the administration to change the middle school uh, parent conferences from Thursday, November 10th to, thir uh, to Wednesday, November 9th. That is and correct. to also adjust the, um, uh, the time frame uh, going from a half a day from the 10th to a half a day on the 9th. Correct. Correct. Okay. And um, um, in, in that motion, um, all due care will be um, will be utilized by the administration to provide um, adequate notice of that change to the public. Oh, I, I can assure you yep. that okay. I, will, I will take personal responsibility for that. Okay. And make sure that um, it's taken care of. So I think that basically is the framing of the motion. Could one of the members um, be kind enough to consider <coughs> making that motion, Mr. Gormley? I'd like to make a motion to approve moving middle school parent-teacher conferences from Thursday the 10th to Wednesday the 9th, and also making the Thursday half day for on the 10th and having a half day on Wednesday the 9th to accommodate the change. Okay. Is that a second? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> So Mr. D'Agostino made a second of that motion. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? All right, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. So do the students. Thank you. Okie doke, thank you, Dr. Murray. Okay, under new business, um, I see we have approval of the new BPS fuel efficiency policy. That is an item that we discussed at the last finance subcommittee meeting. Basically, I believe uh, Mr. Petronio d discussed that. Uh, did you discuss that as well, Mr. Thomas? Yes. Okay. Um, or was it you that discussed it? <coughs> it was me. It was you. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Petronio sat that one out. Ah, I see. Okay. And um, just for clarification, <coughs> this was a recommendation uh, that the mayor also supported because it was basically a policy that um, would open up potential funding for the city um, to utilize grant money in order to help obtain vehicles. And I think the um, purpose of that policy was to establish um, a requirement that the Brockton Public Schools purchase only fuel efficient vehicles for use uh, for the school system uh, whenever such vehicles um, can be commercially uh, purchased and utilized, such as a driver ed vehicle. As an example, when we need a new driver ed car, we would, um, if possible, uh, purchase a fuel efficient vehicle that uh, meets um, high gasoline um, standards, you know, with regard to getting the most miles per gallon uh, so that we can get more bang for the buck. So. Um, and the, the committee uh, as a whole, I believe, unanimously approved that policy. Okay, so um, we need then a motion uh, to approve the um, new recommended Brockton Public School fuel efficiency policy, which was discussed at that finance subcommittee meeting. And I think that finance subcommittee meeting was on, was the 11th? Uh, October 11th. Okay, good. My memory is not going yes. bad just yet. So, yes. I believe that was a policy meeting. I it says finance. Yes. No. It says finance. I yeah. I thought it was policy. Yes. I thought it was policy, and I said, yes. I guess I'm losing it because I saw finance. Correct. But 
I'm on it. Okay, good. All right. So this is good. Ms. Plant. Please do. Okay, motion to approve the new um, Brockton Public Schools fuel efficiency policy. Excellent. Seconded. Any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none. All in favor? Wonderful. Okay. Um, executive session. Would anyone like to go into executive session for anything? Seeing no one raising their hand, we will move on to um, any, um, any business anyone like to discuss before we adjourn the meeting? Any items, anything going on? Um, uh, I'll just point out one, one item in everyone's packet. Uh, the mayor was kind enough to arrange a, um, uh, a session from the attorney general's office with regard to the open meeting laws. I uh, picked up for everyone a copy of the materials uh, used at that session. They're in everyone's packet this evening. Um, if you have any questions about any materials in that session, um, I'm familiar with it because I've had to deal with it for the last nine years. Um, so um, just to let you know, it was, it was a very good refresher course. Um, and the good thing is that we're doing things correctly. So that was, I was basically um, very pleased when I was following along with the materials to basically say to myself, you know what, we're doing it the right way. But I did learn some, uh, some new things, um, especially with respect to superintendent searches um, and when uh, you have to make public the identity of the uh, applicants and at what stage that has to be done. Um, the first level of participants uh, do not need to be made public, um, but when it gets to a certain level that we have finalists, everything has to be done um, so that the public is aware of who the finalists are and with respect to certain um, voting and actions taken. So. Um, the clarification was very good. So um, again, take a look at those materials. Um, it, was, it was very well presented and um, were actually very well attended too. So, and, and I want to thank the mayor for arranging that because um, the, the attorney general just doesn't pop up and do these um, sessions often. So it was, it was good of him to arrange that. So anyone else? Uh, Mr. D'Agostino. Just a quick question. We were given um, uh, a, a copy of an email talking about the governor was considering some mid-year budget actions. Do we have any update on where that stands at this point? I do not. Um, perhaps Mr. Petronio um, can um, uh, inform us at the next meeting of uh, those type of financial uh, issues. Uh, that's, he was, I know Mr. Petronio and Mr. Bandis um, I believe we're out of the district today. It's a um, today and tomorrow. Yeah, so a, a workshop oh, for right. procurement with the attorney general's office. Right. Okay. So that's why Mr. Petronio isn't here tonight. Otherwise, I'm sure he could have answered that question. All right. Very good. Um, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Hopefully, everyone will join us Friday night uh, at uh, Brockton High School for the football game. It'll be another great. Um, uh, game and it'll also be a nice halftime show. The band does a great job. Mr. Gormley. The Big Three Championship. Too. So it's the last regular season football game, um, and whoever wins goes to the playoffs. Yep. So it's a big one mm. year round. Excellent. Okay. Okay. No one else? Okay. Can I entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Someone? Second. All in favor? Thank you for attending.